going to go straight into our first final. Your referee for this first match is Mr. Marco Meyer from the Netherlands. And we are going to go into the girls' singles final. It is England v Ireland. Please welcome to the stage first, from England, Paige Pauling! His opponent is from the Republic of Ireland. Please welcome Rebecca Allen. It is a great honor and a great pleasure to welcome you all here for the final day of the double VDF World Cup in Esbjerg in Denmark. Today we will have the last final matches and the last semi-final matches for both the youth and the senior tournaments. We will dig a bit deeper into the program for the rest of the day, but First of all, let me welcome my co-commentator, uh, co Andrew Sinclair. Thank you so much for joining me here. It's a pleasure to, to join you, Daniel. I had good fun doing this yesterday and uh, hopefully we'll enjoy today as well because we've got a busy, busy program of games coming up. Very much so. And I believe if, if you are a big darts fan, especially of the double VDF circuit, you will know that Andrew is one of, one of the, well, he's an encyclopedia of knowledge. So it's great to have you by my side. Right now we're watching the girls final between England, Paige Pauling, and from Ireland, Rebecca Allen. And both players are now nine darts into the game, but Andrew, who, what do, can we expect from this match? Who do we think is the favourite beforehand? Well, I think Paige would start as the favourite. She won the girls' pairs yesterday. She also won the mixed pairs alongside Thomas Banks. But she's been one of the strongest players on the youth circuit for the last few years on the, on the WDF Tour. She's won 11 girls' titles on the WDF Tour now. She won the Girls' World Masters last year. Uh, and in this tournament, before the final, she's only dropped two legs in six games. So she's just been dominant. Rebecca, on the other hand, she's had a few tighter games. She lost in the group stage to, to Lida Lanko from Finland. But in the, she's had a couple of last leg deciders. So she showed that grit when she's been pushed and she's played well. Paige hasn't had that yet, but um, maybe this game will be different. I think this will probably be quite close because they're similar in ability, but they're both also irritatingly young. Paige is 15, Rebecca's 14, which makes me feel a bit, you know, they're both better than me by quite a long <laughs> margin. And 
was Rebecca Allen, first on the double, missed the chances, and then Paige just punishes the few mistakes from her Irish opponent. I actually saw Rebecca play for the first time last year at the Irish Open weekend in Killarney, which is one of the best weekends on the, the WDF circuit, and she won both the girls' titles available that weekend, played some good stuff, but she's really upped her game since then in terms of averages, scoring, and she, her grouping seems to be a lot tighter, and I think she's kind of benefited from that in this tournament, particularly in those close games. <laughs> Unlucky deflection there from Paige. Looked like we were going to get our first 180 of the final just there. Yeah, talking about grouping. Even though there was a dart on the floor, that was very good from Paige, who, as you said, won both gold medals yesterday in, in the pairs and also in the mixed pairs event. And how big of a difference do you think it is to, to have been on the stage yesterday, which Paige was, of course, winning both her finals. And then Rebecca, well, who hasn't had that experience yesterday. Yeah, I think every stage, even though most stages are set up broadly the same, every stage is slightly different where the cameras are, where the lights are. And you're never going to be super familiar with it until you've been up there. So, yeah, for Paige to have been up there twice yesterday would have been a huge benefit anyway, but obviously she was up there in two winning performances, which does wonders for the mm. the confidence. Um, Rebecca, obviously, she played on the smaller streaming board, I believe, uh, in the other venue, in the, the Grandly Hockey Arena, but she's not played on that big stage yet, and obviously that will be a learning curve for her, I think. Um, yeah, Paige. Wondered if she was going to go single 20, give herself a shot at the ball, but she's opted to lay up for next time and there will be a lot of opinions about going yeah. that way and not for the bullseye but in my humble opinion I think that's something that we will see a lot more in the game going forward that the players will have a look at what their opponents are left on before just without thinking going for the bullseye route I think that was the right decision yeah, no, Paige has started this game very well. Clinical on the doubles, two first-time finishes on tops, starting this third leg on throw with a 1-3-4. So I think that kind of confidence, comfortable nature with the stage, I think, is what we're seeing in this early going. Um, Rebecca's had a couple of loose starts, a few 45, 41 visits. Um, I say that, and then she finds the <laughs> treble 20. But, yeah, I think Paige has started well, and... She's someone that I think has, uh, oh, I mean, both of these girls do, but Paige is someone that's really shown that promise, winning all those youth titles that I mentioned, particularly last year, she won an awful lot. Um, but even this year, she went over to Belgium and won a title. She went over to Slovakia and won a title. Uh, her older brother played darts. I think that's how she got into it. Um, but she's got real potential. Uh, and it was a bit of a surprise, actually, last year when she won the Girls' World Masters. They played the early rounds of the Girls' World Championship and she didn't actually make it through, so she won't be in the final at Lakeside this year. It's uh, Aurora Focasato from Italy and uh, Christina Turai from Hungary, but she won't be there, despite winning the Masters the same weekend. I think a lot of people expected, you know, you've done one, you're going to do both, but uh, she missed out, which I'm sure she was disappointed about, but, yeah, down to 40 after 15 darts in this leg, so looks like she's in a strong position to, to potentially move 3-0 up now. She has been extremely clinical on the doubles so far. It just gets on with the game. <laughs> Very impressive. Yeah, there's no there's no real rest or break. She's just straight up there, bang, bang, bang. Oh, that's unlucky. But if you want to get into darts, it doesn't matter if you're a youth player or, or senior player and you want to be as good as you can, then these two players are a very good example of what you should be doing. As you can see, very much focused on the game, but also look at their throwing action. It's just so simple. There's a really good follow through. Pretty much only the forearm is doing the action. And they keep their body still, a good 
backswing as well. So there's really nothing that can go wrong, really, other than nerves and <laughs> just being a human being. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I think, you know, for youth players particularly, I mean, this is true for any dot player, nothing can beat our experience and playing matches. And I think the fact that at the World Cup they do the singles and the pairs and the mixed pairs in a round-robin format, it means that even if you, you say, lose all of your games, you still get to play four times or, or three times or however many times. And that, that's going to help you develop a lot more, particularly if you come from Mongolia. Or, you know, we saw a girl from Egypt win Egypt's first ever World Cup medal in this tournament when she got to... Uh, the semi-finals, Mariam Abdul Hafez. I've probably got the name wrong, but I tried my best. But it's a massive benefit to those players, particularly if you've come from overseas, because you're probably going to be playing players of a higher standard or players you've not played before, who maybe approach the different the game in a different way to the players that you play all the time on the Canadian youth circuit or American youth circuit. Rebecca Allen on the board now, twenty dart leg breaks back so she's put herself in a, a good position you see the Irish team there watching on but no I think that the, the round robin format definitely definitely helped because you know you know the group Rebecca was in for example in the singles that had Sophie McKinney who we saw in the girls pairs final yesterday very talented player and Lida Lanko from Finland who was the, the runner up in the girls world masters last year so that was a really tough group, but to have those games is obviously a huge benefit. Yeah, just had a look. I mean, even though she lost, as you said, to Lida Lanko from Finland, all of Rebecca Allen's group games were with a 70-plus average. So that's that's very good in in the girls' department, but it's also a sign of extreme consistency. Yeah, absolutely. And she, Rebecca, really is the next in the in the line of you know in recent years of of young Irish female players that have come through. You know, there was Robin Byrne first, who I remember very well. Then it was Katie Sheldon. Now both of those are, are in the senior ladies team, who we'll see later on in the team event. And you can see Rebecca's following that same pathway. Um, and I think if she continues developing the way she has, you talk about those seventy averages. I think you know she's still only fourteen. So, in theory, next time we, we go to a World Cup, which is going to be in South Korea, which she is will quite be exciting. averaging 120. <laughs> I hope so. But she'll be 16, so she's potentially she could still play in another World Cup. And even in theory, 2027 decision hasn't been made yet on where that's going to be. But she could play in two more World Cups for Ireland. Which, in terms of de developing your game, to be able to play in three World Cups as a youth would obviously be a huge, huge benefit for him. But Pulled it back to 3-2 now, uh, young Rebecca Allen. So she is making a game of this, and it'll be interesting to see how Paige responds because, she's, as I said before, she's not really been put under a lot of pressure so far in this tournament. I think if you speak to someone like Fallon Sherrock or Bo Greaves, they will both say that the youth time they spend on the double VDF circuit and especially the World Cups and the Europe Cups have really helped their game even as seniors looking back on, on their development throughout the years. So there's no doubt as as you have just said that this really is important for these players. You, you can't underestimate good match practice and you shouldn't regard this as practice but it's a very good experience. Yeah, we've seen both players have a, a few darts on the floor in this leg. Uh, Paige is the first down to a finish, or uh, 160 after 15, but Rebecca's well positioned on 119, and she will get at least one shot at it. You could have argued that on the last start she should have went down for the 19s, however. She's now trying to leave 20, which she does, so pressure on Paige here. <laughs> clinical <just> once brutal. again. <laughs> yeah, clinical once again. Another 20 dart legs. It's 4-2 now. And uh, Rebecca throwing now to, to stay in the match. Paige just one leg away from victory in this best of nine girls final. And, you know, it's, it's you know England 
you know, we talked about the Irish production line. England have obviously had huge success in this youth tournament before. Um, well, a 180 for Rebecca Allen, our first of this final. Um, yeah, obviously England have had success in this tournament before the defending girls singles champion at the World Cup is none other than Bo Greaves, who we'll be seeing a little bit later on. Um, Look, Fallon Sherrick, as you mentioned, Casey Gallagher in Canada in, in 2013 was absolutely dominant. Zoe Jones before that. So England have always have had success in, in this competition. And, you know, I think in Paige and, and Hannah Meek, who we saw yesterday, the future is really bright for, for youth darts, particularly on the female side in England. This leg is looking very bright for Rebecca. She will be back, and both players right now above the 70 averages. So they are delivering under pressure. Oh, loose one there. Uh, that's pretty much the worst thing that could have happened for Rebecca. She will go for a single free to leave double two. Oh, that third one was well. The third one was very loose. The second <laughs> one was also very loose. And now, from nowhere, Paige is going to have a shot to win the match. The match dot here at tops. Very fine margins for Paige, as Rebecca now has a chance again. And you expect this one to go in, which it doesn't. And that was a, a loose miss as well, so the pressure starting to kick in for both girls now. And yeah, Rebecca comes inside on the double one, so Paige comes back for five for the title. Yeah, these are real nerves and there's, there's no reason to think less of the players right now. This is so, so tough. She did the right thing though, throwing the first one above the double. And that's it. Paige Pauling is your 2023 WF World Cup Girls Singles Champion. Her third gold medal of this year's tournament. Uh, and I suspect she'll probably get a fourth in the overall for the youth as well. But yeah, Rebecca Allen played well there. The last leg's going to hurt the averages of both players. But Rebecca started that last leg wonderfully. And then it was that loose start on double 10 that went into the six. It just completely hurt her rhythm. And, and you know, eventually her and Paige, you know, ended on that double one. But a good win for Paige, but a good performance for both girls and a good advert for, for youth darts, I think. And also a very good start to the last final matches of this World Cup. We will be back in just a few moments with the boys final. So congratulations to Paige and to the England team after a well-deserved victory and a very good final. So hang on and we will be back in just a few moments time.